Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Dr. Nick, the incrementalist. Join me as I seek out the small incremental changes being applied in other industries that we can learn from and that can be applied in healthcare. Can these changes bring immediate value, but also add up to the big improvements and revolution we need in healthcare? Come along with me to explore the possibilities. My innovative guests from around the globe have used small incremental improvements to achieve their moonshot. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Aboud Shabalut. He is the founder and CEO of Diagnos. Aboud, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Nick. So as I always do, I think it's important to get the context of individuals uh, that uh, come on my show. Tell me a little bit about your background, uh, how you got here, what the sort of journey was to founding a, a new company in this space. Absolutely. So I have launched a few companies in the healthcare, healthcare space. Um, in the middle of law school, I actually took sabbatical to uh, launch a company um, around the financing and litigation of outstanding B2B healthcare debt. Uh, and what that, what that basically means is we were providing liquidity to providers uh, by buying their unpaid bills. Um, and, and these are bills unpaid uh, by insurance companies to the providers and then litigating them uh, and recovering on that debt. And uh, through that process, I learned a lot about um, how money flows in our healthcare system. And I and, and more importantly, I learned a lot about what pain points providers face in their day-to-day -day operations of their businesses. And, and, and the reason that this was, this was uh, so vivid was because these providers were, were in distress selling their medical bills to begin with. I saw a few common threads and a few common patterns that really gave me insights into what it means to operate a clinic or a hospital. But at the same time, um, I also was able to taste what it means to operate a medical business myself uh, because I ended up uh, managing an urgent care in a pharmacy um, during that, that same uh, time period. And uh, through that experience, really learned about um, how expensive and how difficult it is uh, to run a, a well-oiled and quality op uh, operation within a clinic. And, and this was just with just one urgent care. Uh, the idea was uh, to launch throughout the state of California with, with multiple units, um, but <laughs> decided that one was enough and, and uh, got out of that business uh, as quickly as I stepped in. And I, at the same time, also managed a medical billing company and learned a lot about uh, what it means to service medical providers from a revenue cycle perspective. And uh, one takeaway from that experience was that uh, the, the, the incentives between providers and, and revenue cycle vendors can often be misaligned. And essentially, the way I look at it is, is now I've seen healthcare from a number of lenses and a number of angles um, and uh, decided to, to take that learning and, and see if I can uh, uh, do my part in, in making the system a little bit better. So I, truly fascinating, but I've got to ask, how does a lawyer end up in that sort of initial startup? There must have been something that triggered this to get you to sort of jump out and do that. It's a good question, and and this this goes into my uh, let's call it um, personal ambitions. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I I I I didn't know this, or I couldn't articulate this early on in my life. I always thought I was going to be a doctor, um, and then ended up going to uh, the Middle East, where I served as a Fulbright Fellow um, un under the State Department. And uh, when I came back to the U.S., decided that I no longer wanted to go to medical school, um, and I and I thought that I can have more of an impact and play a bigger role as a lawyer. So I went to I went to law school, and uh, while I was in law school, uh, realized that I just wanted to do more. And the next 
uh, I guess, space where you can do more is is in the entrepreneurial space. And mm. uh, had, I saw an opportunity um, and and jumped out of law school for a few years to to, to jump in. I, it's one of the things I love about this uh, program is the opportunity to discover that because, you know, the journeys that get us to these points are always important in the, the, the drivers and ultimately the same driver that, you know, physicians and anybody in healthcare has, you know, helping solve those problems. But those different lenses are so important to deliver the value because, you know, if you just have one set of individuals, you can't really solve for it. And, you know, you bring this incredible expertise from a, a legal standpoint and obviously all the billing experience, which, you know, incredibly important that most folks don't focus on. So very interested to hear. So clearly, you know, this fantastic background that really delivers insights that I think other people would not have. And now you're focusing on something that I looked at and thought, wow, this is the medical coding whisperer or medical coding whisperer company that is providing a solution to help solve for that problem in all of these physician offices where they're struggling with a system that is designed to work, but not for them is my sense of it. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Sure. Lots to unpack there. When it comes to coding, since you bring up coding, Mm. when it comes to coding, um, the way I've always looked at it and the way I always describe it is that it is a translation mechanism that our system depends on for a variety of, of reasons. Um, the, the, the most important reason as far as providers are concerned in the U.S. is that coding gets them to reimbursement. So you translate the, uh, what you did as a provider for a patient and um, what, is, what is the ailment um, that, the, that the patient carries to the insurance company. And then the insurance company um, will pay you some amount of money. That process, um, as I saw it from all my experience, is broken um, because uh, the, 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 the way that that translation happens, it typically will happen um, with the participation of two parties, the provider and either a medical coder or a biller. And they do this in concert with each other. Now, the, the, the reason that, that that's broken is because in many situations, you have a provider initially picking codes, but the provider was never trained in that translation exercise ever in, in, in medical school. And on top of that, they have no time. They literally have no time. The medical coder, on the other hand, is trained in that translation exercise. But their problem is they never went to medical school, yet they're expected to, to read these complex doctor's notes and then do a proper translation. And then therein lies another point, which is, you know, they depend on the notes, but the notes themselves are often not as complete as they could be because the provider literally has no time. Um, so there are, there are many issues um, that contribute to um, the error rates in coding, which is around 30% that contribute to how it feels like it's, it's administratively burdensome. And what, what, what I thought was that it would be very valuable and helpful if we helped providers on the front lines of this process pick better codes. Um, and where, where, when I started the company, my initial vision was Let's go from doctor's notes to codes to bill to bill with one uh, with just one click. Uh, but but we've we've shifted a little bit in our thinking to to not be as naive um, and and to understand that coding is still complex and and that a machine is gonna is gonna play its role. But the role is not as simple as notes to bill, uh, notes to codes to bill. Um, and, and, and the reason for that is, is as I've gone through this journey of building an AI company, I've basically concluded that AI plays very specific roles, um, but those roles are within very defined task sets. Um, so so what, I'm, what I'm envisioning is 
there will be AI solution for a provider and then to help them select the initial codes. And then there will be an AI solution post provider to just validate and verify that these, that now these groupings of codes um, are the right codes given the, the the payer mix, given, you know, various other uh, parameters um, that will, that, that one can essentially rely on um, to go to bill. And I, I believe firmly that providing a provider with a tool that just helps them pick codes is extremely valuable in its own right, even though that code may not be the code that the, the clinic or the hospital is going to rely on to bill. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One reason why um, it's, it's a huge value add, because today, providers have no support in that code picking process. They at best they can rely on two things. Number one, their memory, um, and number two, they can rely on a search bar that the EHR provides for them, which is often buried somewhere. And even when they use it, they'll search for a code. Let's just say, let's just say they're looking for mild intermittent asthma. They'll search for asthma and they'll type AST, and then they'll get this long laundry list of codes revolving around asthma and then they're stuck scrolling and reading and maybe going cross-eyed in the process of going through a few dozen codes um, to pick the one that they want. So this process is, is it, it takes time. There's a lot of clicks involved with it and it's really not, it's really not efficient. There's no smart search associated with it. So uh, we just believe strongly that there's a gap in support here. Um, in terms of in terms of the provider, and we want to deliver we want to deliver that support to the provider. Um, and by the way, coders today they do have support. There are uh, what they call computer assisted coding tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, excuse me, yes, computer assisted coding tools for medical coders and billing teams. But these tools are not designed for providers. Um, and if a provider was to use it, they, it would be way too distracting. So for those of you just joining, I'm Dr. Nick, the incrementalist, and today I'm talking to Aboud Shabalut. He is the founder and CEO of Diagnos. Uh, we were just talking about the whole coding system and uh, the challenge of these two uh, groups that pick uh, the uh, physician uh, in the first instance uh, who is uh, struggling with that, and then uh, the coders, and they lack the sort of crossover training and the supporting infrastructure. One of the things that really strikes me about this that's kind of interesting is it reminds me a lot of the times uh, going back when medical transcription was a much bigger activity, still exists. And one of the things, the, the medical transcriptionists that were gold dust were the ones that were able to, uh, you could challenge them, they could list to, listen to a, a history and physical, and they'd get to the diagnosis before the actual physician had dictated the diagnosis, and they had learned. So they were creating that insight. Same with physicians, I imagine, in terms of the picking codes. There are probably some that are good. What you're doing is bringing an overlay. So help us understand how that works and, and what it is that you're doing, because this sounds like you know fantastic resource that physicians are going to love for a number of really exciting reasons. Yeah, absolutely. The, the way that we do it depends on the level of intelligence that we're that we're that we're basically going for or that's requested. Although we're an AI company, you know, we're very we we very much look at more how more basic solutions can add value from the get-go. So we're w- 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 one thing that is is interesting about what we're doing is that um we're we're able to add value on this continuum of intelligence. Um, and, and what that allows us to do is be able to add value from day number one um, rather than, um, you know, take a few months to develop something uh, hyper intelligent for a customer to utilize. So um, what, what is it that what is it that we do um, on a very basic level? What our technology will do is look at the metadata surrounding a patient encounter and provide a set of codes that could be relevant. And here, I, I want to I emphasize the word uh, metadata. Um, so for example, we can give you your most frequently used codes as a provider, 
um, and that's auto populated. You never have to go to a a billing pick list and, and and select favorites or build that yourself. It's just there. And then the codes are available uh, to you in order of frequency. And what you'll have is a search bar um, that you can use um, from any screen within the EHR. So uh, to, to put it in contrast today, uh, in order to search for a code, you have to go to a very specific screen within the EHR. Usually it's going to be um, the assessment page of your note, and that's where you, you'll search for a diagnosis. With, with our tool, you can be documenting the history of present illness, and then you can search for diagnoses as you're going right, right there on that page. And you might even be able to start picking codes and, and even post them uh, to, the, to the assessment page or to the billing screen right from the history of the present illness page, just, just as an example. So that, that's on, that's on the, the, the basic level. On the more, uh, uh, let's call it on the more um, sophisticated um, intelligence um, side of the spectrum, what our technology will do is actually read your note in real time and predict codes targeted to that set of notes. And um, this has a, a, a variety of benefits. Number one, you're not you're essentially getting codes served to you on a silver platter as a provider. Um, but also you you are it's more likely that you will start picking codes that you would have otherwise, forgotten because because the machine is is serving as the second pair of eyes or as this expert that's sitting on your shoulders reading your notes and whispering codes into your ears just re- you know reminding you hey you address this you should consider you should consider this code um and and they're there for you to just glance at and and click on if you uh if you agree with those codes now in 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 either implementation our goal is 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 one of one or both of two things. Number one, to significantly reduce the number of clicks it takes you to pick codes. And number two is to help you pick more accurate codes and a more count, comprehensive um, list of codes. And one one note here is um and, and this was an is it, this was uh an, an an interesting discovery that I that I uh, found um, through the journey of, of of building Diagnos is for many providers, coding is not coding. What they call it is documenting my diagnoses. Mm. But the way EHRs are built is is the way they have you document your diagnoses. They're essentially having you pick a code even though there's no code on the screen, if that makes sense. So in my opinion, most providers are coding. Some of them just don't know it. So uh, as I think about that process, are you also, so you're clearly taking the content that they're entering, putting in. Are you also taking content that exists on the screen? Are you able to take additional inputs that maybe they haven't entered, but already exist as part of the EHR? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So all of that context contributes on an ongoing basis. There's this real time activity that sort of provides additional insights one of the things that really sort of strikes me is that, you know, much as anything, this is an efficiency, feels like it sort of addresses, you know, some of the challenges that we have, the uh, productivity challenges around EHRs, um, which is definitely one of the major contributors to uh, uh, burnout at this point. That's right. And, and, and that's where we're headed as an as a organization now. Um, we're thinking bigger than, than just coding and what we ultimately want to do is uh, help improve EHR productivity for providers. Um, and and what one way to think about that is okay, we're we're we have our sidebar, and it's integrated uh, with your EHR, and we're giving you as a provider codes. But we can also, at, but but while we're giving you codes. And as you interact with our tool, we can probably start giving you likely labs that you're going to order and help you avoid going to the lab section of your EHR. You can just order the lab right there from our from our sidebar or help bring on screen 
the most likely prescription that you're going to write. And again, help you save clicks. Or you may have questions, certain questions that you'd like us to answer and, and we can build a model um, and, and, and serve the results of that model on screen for you. So for example, um, now that I've picked these grouping of codes, uh, what's the likelihood that my claim is going to be denied? So I can, I, we can essentially serve that, um, serve that on screen for you so that you uh, can make certain adjustments right then and there rather than wait until a coder or a biller looks at it um, and then uh, sends you a message and then force you in a situation where you now have to go backwards in your in your workflow to remember what happened in, in, in a particular encounter just to fix some documentation or to fix some aspect of your code selections. Um, so, so, so really, there's a very strong path um, where we can help providers uh, just be more efficient. And the way we look at it is as consumers, we have a lot of tools at our disposal that helps us be more efficient. One example of this is if you use Gmail, Gmail will predict, you know, that you write half a sentence, it'll predict the other half of your sentence for you. And then that, the, the, let's say that even works 50% of the time. It's, it's super helpful. So, so we want to bring this type of a uh, seamless, uh, uh, productivity boosts to providers um, working in EHRs. Um, and we believe that we can make a difference in their day-to-day uh, practice. Wow, that's really exciting. I mean, I, I think, you know, as a concept starts to give real value and remove, uh, as we always called it, scut work, um, you know, the drudgery that exists around healthcare, the administrivia that just sort of frustrates people. And it feels like this is a real potential solution for clinicians all over that, you know, can potentially add value to what they do and allow them to get back to the patient, which is ultimately the goal. So exciting stuff. Um, Any last thoughts in the uh, remaining minute of where you see this going and what the opportunities are? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I believe, I believe that, I believe that if we provide providers with with these predictive enhancements um, for their EHRs, not only will it make their lives better as providers, but it'll also it also stands um, to improve the provision of care. And I'll give you just a very quick consumer example. Um, I believe it was Pinterest or Instagram that did a study um, on the use of emojis if they if if they successfully predict the next emoji that you would want to use in a post. And what they found is by doing that, they actually boosted emoji use. So imagine what that means for, for, for providers in, in, in a healthcare setting. So one, one uh, problem that I've heard from, from clients, especially in the value-based care world, is that um, some providers are not picking enough uh, diagnoses to paint the right uh, story um, uh, the right patient story um, in a value-based care setting. Well, if we're if we're predicting codes for you, I mean, th- th- there's a strong chance here that it'll boost the the the, the comprehensiveness of a of, of a patient note. So I just wanted to uh, leave That's you with, with that example. Absolutely fantastic. All right, as usual, we've run out of time. Uh, it just remains for me to uh, thank you for uh, joining me on the show, Abud. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, Nick. Pleasure is mine. Thanks for joining me today. Do you have any better ideas or have you found a small incremental change that's brought about a big improvement in your world? Let's continue the conversation on our hashtag, The Incrementalist, or share with me at Dr. Nick One on Twitter. You can find more information about the show on our program page at healthcarenowradio.com. And tune in next time to hear my discussions with leaders and innovators from around the globe who've revolutionized their space by using small incremental improvements to achieve their moonshot. I'm Dr. Nick, the incrementalist, and I'm starting a revolution through evolution. 